fans, welcome back to After the Credits with Josh and Tyler, where we break down the latest and greatest movies, including our favorite scenes, quotes, trivia, and even how we think it should have ended. Grab another bowl of popcorn and enjoy the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to After the Credits with Tyler and Dylan, and being hey. joined by one of the most dashing-looking group of gentlemen um, known as the band Whitmore. Um, Howdy. Or, or Weird More, because we've only got three out of the four here. Yeah. Um, 75% effort today. Sorry, shouts everybody. Shouts out to the missing guy. It's okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll get you Love you, Mitch. Mitch. Love you, Mitch. Grow the mustache back. Stop being yes. such a busy individual. But yeah, if you guys didn't listen to the preview episode, uh, we'll do a little, just a little quick introduction before we get into the movie. Um, Kyle, kick it off if you want. Uh, so my name's Kyle. I am the guitarist for Whitmore here. Hi, I'm Rob. I'm uh, the drummer for Whitmore. He bangs things with wood. I with bang wood. things with wood. <laughs> and other things. And oh, my things. wood. <laughs> and I am Josh, and I am the other half of the rhythm section, also the bass player. Slapping bass. Yeah, Slapping these are bass. these are our buddies from Whitmore. Blowing up in the music scene in Omaha. Make sure to check them out, but we have them on to talk about a couple movies. A couple musical movies. I wouldn't say musicals. But yeah. movies, thank, so thank God. I'm I'm God I don't think musicals. I could have sat through two musicals. So, no. so people always say that, and then I'm like, wait a second. Like, one of my favorite movies of all time that we also covered on the podcast, if you want to go back and listen to it. Uh, the Ooh, Rockstar? Of, the Pick of Destiny. That's oh, a, oh, the oh, Pick of Destiny. That is my that favorite is a musical. musical. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, Juicy. we got them on today talking about a music movie uh, starring one of my favorite bands, like I, a band that I've listened to my whole life. Uh, always loved them. Um, the movie Studio 666 with the Foo Fighters. Um, so the storyline we got here is legendary rock band Foo, Fi- Foo Fighters move into an Encino. Encino? Encino? Encino. Captain Encino. Yeah. Into an Encino mansion steeped in grisly rock and roll history to record their much anticipated 10th album. Once in the house, Dave Grohl finds himself grappling with supernatural forces that threaten both the completion of the album and the lives of the band. Um, it's a it's a fun movie. It's 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 a good time. Um, the director's B J McDonald. This guy, so this guy directed a lot of like Slayer, which is why they have uh, Carrie King, Kerry King yeah. And crew. But, yeah, but yeah, he uh, he saw he he directed a bunch of their music videos. He directed a documentary about Slayer. Okay, um, he's di- directed a couple of Foo Fighters music videos, and they're like, why not have him on and direct this movie? Yeah. So um, Hey, tidbit, uh, Carrie King. That's the reason that I did like the half sleeve of Tribal. Oh, um, uh, yeah, nice. yeah, because he's, like, he's got like yeah, he's got. I was yeah, like, I want to be him. Yeah. I want to be Kerry King with a uh, like half sleeve of tribal. I want to be just cool missing like the him. Six foot bre- braided beard. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Him and George Clooney badass. and uh, Just Till Dawn. But now I gave up on it, and we're just gonna black it out. Black That's it out. all right. Yeah, yeah that's no, all right. No, that, nope. I've progressed. <laughs> Something like that. So this was released in 2022. Oh. Like at the uh, it was it was filmed in the pandemic in secret like people didn't really know that it was happening the reason they filmed it i'll get into that with trivia later but hey 2022 i know it was just last year um let me some think. some fucking bangers what are some movies that came out in 2022 do you guys have any black adam black oh, adam yeah, came that out in did. Say, i've been off the new movie train for a minute yeah. so that's hard for me to come up with um i mean the I new mean, the new avatar yeah i was just yeah. gonna say just came uh, out. movies spider-man train? Uh, Bullet Train that was with a good one. Uh, Brad Pitt. Brad I haven't Pitt. seen that one yet, but you it's haven't. On, uh, I, it's it's on my it's on list. Netflix. I, I need should, to I need to see good, it. But. It's a good one. I just watched that with a couple of my buddies uh, not too long ago. It's a it's a that's a it's the director who got who did uh, the Deadpool movies. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was supposed to have happened was Ryan Reynolds was supposed to be the lead for Bullet Train, um, but he I don't remember what movie he. T- oh, Free Guys. He did the movie Free, oh, Free Guys. Guy, yeah. And uh, or yeah, Free Guy. And he uh, so he backed out of it, and then they casted Brad Pitt. And the reason they casted Brad Pitt is because he did the Invisible Man uh, cameo in oh, Deadpool yeah. 2. And so they had him on that, which is funny because like, they gave him that brief cameo in uh, in Deadpool 2. They also give Ryan Reynolds a very similar brief cameo in in uh, uh, Bullet, Train. Bullet Train. Yeah, That's cool. So I'll, That's I'll have cool. to watch for that. Yeah, you have yeah. to check That's it out. Really it's cool. awesome. It's awesome. But yeah, so that, I mean, 2022, that it's, we don't really don't need to go through movies that came there out. Were there were some was, good movies, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah some, list them off. Ba- I think uh, if you nope want to. came out. That was yeah, uh, a nope pretty was, big oh, one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah. The movie Smile. I don't know if Dude, you guys I heard. I just watched that on the plane to I heard that was terrifying. It is. It is creepy. I only saw the previews, and I was like, yeesh. I'm like a quarter halfway in, and I'm not like, It picks up. 
it, does it? Like it, it's a slow burn, and then it's fucking chaos. All right, it'll get yeah. uh, take two then from me. Um, uh, Morbius. Yeah. Oh, that, that was, got that was dumped a on. Was a, yeah, a it, it that was got the, the massive backlash. It was, it was, that cost Mar- was because it Marvel it was, or DC? It was, that's no, Marvel. Sony. That's Sony. Marvel. It was well, Sony. Right. Marvel. Okay. Yeah. They yeah. lost a ton of money on that movie. Fucking awful. That was one of the worst super like. So you can say like the original like Eric Bana Hulk yeah. movie or like uh, uh, what was the other one? That Green Hulk Lantern's is, one Hulk that gets universal, speaking of Ryan, Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern's one, one, that, one that gets dumped on, even though I like it. Yeah. Oh, it but it not because enjoyable. it's a good movie. Right. Um, I just like Green Lantern. But right. so Morbius was interesting, and I might be wrong about this, but there were people on the wrong. internet that thank you. <laughs> there that, were not that people tracks. on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so there are people on the internet that baited the studio into wanting this done right and so they garnered a bunch of interest for this and so the studio releases this and nobody went and saw it it was just like a giant joke and the people is what did, i heard i need to look more into it but it were, we're like this is fucking bad yeah like, this is really like, it was okay. i love jared leto i i enjoyed it the online backlash being, was heavy on and, that one yeah tying into kind of the blade universe is what i kind yeah. of was gathering from it it I love Blade, works though. pretty good. Yeah, you know, and yeah, the Blade fact is, that they're Blade gonna hot. be rebooting that series mm-hmm. here right in the next soon. Few years. Yeah. Also, if you want, you can go back and listen to me and my buddy Isaiah talk about the Blade trilogy on yeah. after the credits. Isaiah, as well. and isn't he that one weird looking feller yeah, we had down here? He's got like long hair, or something. Look like yeah, I call he's him Sasquatch. Real he's a tall yeah. drink of municipal water. He's in my phone. <laughs> as I, Isaiah parentheses fuzzy. That's, that's yeah. what he's in my phone. As. Um, Actually, yeah, so, I, I mean, Isaiah, was, uh, you got your notebook here too. Yeah, so come get come your get it. Notebook. Just kidding. Um, he doesn't listen to the podcast. Yeah, he doesn't want anything to do with the show. Um, what is uh, is that? I mean, are those the note words? I know there was more movies, but I mean, those are the I mean, yeah. I think those are the top ones we can talk about. Yeah. So yeah, uh, well, I, I mean, you got the ones that are like all up for Oscars and everything, like everything, everywhere, all at once. And, Isaiah's riff. It's called New New. Uh, that sounds like every f- recording file on my computer. New one. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I'm stealing it. It's mine now. <laughs> Isaiah, not a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, some some decent movies came out in 2022. We don't need to go back through all of them because there's been so many fucking, so many. It, it was just last yeah. year. So yep. Um. So box office wise, I could not. I don't know if any of you guys could. I could not find a fucking budget for this movie. This is the first time ever that I couldn't find the actual budget. I know what it grossed. I know what it made, but I couldn't find what their actual budget was. I know that it was like minuscule. It was very, yeah. very small. It gave off. We just want to do this, so we're gonna make it happen. Which kind is, of vibes. Yeah, yeah. Like, a, like even a if very, Dave yeah, had like, to like pay they, for it himself, like yeah. they were bored. Like didn't have anything going on. It's like, hey, let's make a movie. And I'm sure they've wanted to do something like that forever. Yeah. It gave very much Pick of Destiny and vibes, that's what I was right? Say, oh, wow. It, it yeah. Me, Dave Grohl has yeah. that tie to Tenacious D. He's yep. recorded drums, yep. performed with them live several I was times. Really, really he was in the Pick of Destiny. Did, yeah. I was really bummed that we didn't get like a, some sort of Jack Black or Kyle Gass either cameo or like a Tenacious yeah. D song. I was looking for it, for sure. Especially the beats that that movie hit. It was just Pick of Destiny with gratuitous violence. Yeah, exactly. That's funny you say that. I watched this with my girlfriend, Natasha and and she said that it's almost as if you took uh, Pick of Destiny and had it directed by Rob Zombie. That's fair. Yeah, that's, that's essentially that's the vibe. And, and yeah. she yeah, said this after the chainsaw scene. Which um, is yeah. Which, and which and is I will get we'll get and after, we'll get and after we watched that, she said that I was like, all right, that checks out. That's yeah. all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah I get that's what you're saying. Definitely Rob's brand. So yeah, budget I have no idea, but it grossed in U.S. and Canada two million five hundred thirteen dollars nine hundred sixty five hundred thirteen thousand nine hundred sixty three dollars, which is nothing. Yeah, that is, so that is I just found box office production budget. Zero you found dollars. it? Yeah. See that it's, zero dollars. It, most likely this was funded by the band. Most likely this was a record label. Like, we'll pay for yeah. it. Like, yeah. Don't, don't worry. Yeah. So and, and I'll get into it later in trivia. But there's a reason why they did the movie. The movie wasn't even going to happen, but they. Because of COVID, a tour got canceled. The t- yeah. really, it was called the Van Tour. They were literally going to tour in a van together as I a band. I remember hearing something oh, about that. Yeah. Just the yeah. red van. Because that of they... the red van. Yep. Yeah. And the red van is in the movie. Right. Yep. But yeah, that, they can't. That got canceled because of COVID. So they're like, well, fuck. Let's well, in movie. hindsight, that worked out really well given what happened to Taylor. Um, oh, yeah. Rest oh, in yeah. peace. Yeah. yeah. Moment yeah. of silence for Taylor. So when I found out that he died, I was at I was at the bowling alley, um, and I'm sitting there just dicking around, having drinks in the bar after bowling, and uh, I get an alert on my phone. It's like you know, breaking Taylor Hawkins of Foo Fighters 
dies. That's right, yeah. And mm-hmm. I, I, like, I, like, was, sh- like, shaking and dropped my phone. And I was like, I have to go. My brother's like, what, why? What do you? And I was like, Taylor Hawkins just died. And he's like, from Foo Fighters? I'm like, yeah, man. And, like, I, I rode home. I listened to, I, I spent an extra, like, 45 minutes in the car listening to all Foo Fighters, like, all the yeah. Foo Fighters music that I love yeah. and just fucking crying, dude. Yeah. It's, like, yeah. not because of, like, just because, like, he died, but, like, the fact that, like, he was a father, he was right. a husband, mm-hmm. he was, like... You can relate to all that A stuff. good fucking yeah. guy, too. I mean, oh, just yeah. from what I've seen. And that's what I was I mean, going to say, is, like, he just broken, like, a really nasty addiction with the help from Dave. Mm-hmm. Like, it, like he, had, he had made a big turnaround in his life, health-wise, and then it just... Out of fucking and that's, nowhere. I, I thought a lot about Dave um, after I heard about Taylor because oh God. I mean they were like brothers. I mean, well, oh, yeah. Dave. I mean, he. I mean, it being in Nirvana, he talks about Kurt dying, yeah. right? Quite a bit. Losing I mean, that was a pretty well, impactful asked about moment. it at right. nauseum as well. Right. 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 Exactly. Those are, those are two and so, big, two but big then, people in his right. Life. But then to lose Taylor after that, I yeah. mean, the guy has well, had. Lost. And they were well. Ta- Taylor was kind of the the friendship entity that replaced. Because Taylor and Dave were two of the guys who were there since the beginning with Foo Fighters. Yeah. Right. And Taylor was kind of the guy who replaced the friendship value that Kurt, that Kurt had. did. Well, and so and it's like to lose well, and, Kurt and then to lose. And then it, there Taylor's. was a there was a documentary that the Foo Fighters had done a little while yeah. back, or Dave did. I can't remember the title of it, but. Oh, yeah. He was talking, talking about, about the, 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 the recording studio. The, studio. Yeah. Well, it was going through that and just like the journey that a band that is putting out 10 albums plus yeah. goes through. And there was a stretch of time where Dave stepped away from the Foo Fighters and did drums for Queens of the Stone Age. Yep, Shout out to right, those guys. Yeah. They They're rock so awesome. hard. Yeah, they're great. Um, that's a super group, too. Yeah. yeah. They, they yep. Songs for the Deaf is one of my top oh, three absolutely. favorite albums Fucking of all time. slaps. Yeah, the whole um, album. Yeah. But him and Taylor were at huge odds during that time because Dave was in a creative rut and burnt out with Foo Fighters, and that was his pursuit. Mm-hmm. And Dave kind of was a dick about how he went about it and he admits that yeah. and, well, and Taylor, Taylor was dealing with his addiction issue Taylor had his yeah. own issues at the time and then but they got past those and I, worked through that and became so much more close I don't yeah. know does, does your band have any multi in, in, instrumentalists I don't could, the reason I say that I don't I couldn't be Taylor Hawkins and drum for like a notable drummer like that Oh, yeah, like, I mean, yeah. Yeah. like Dave Grohl being the drummer for for, for uh, right. 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 I mean, then, I mean, yeah. Dave even says he's he's we're a drummer. Both, yeah. Mean, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's like we're both drummers. We're both we drummers. speak the we same language. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean just in Godsmack, same way. Uh, Soli Erna, the, the the singer guitarist, is originally. I mean, he's a drummer, yeah. and I couldn't I couldn't be a drummer for Phil a Collins fucking drummer. Like Phil Collins, Phil Collins, high profile, right? I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. I mean, I play guitar, bass, and but primarily drums. Right. Right. But, but you're not, we don't like expertise in like <laughs> any other <laughs> <laughs> drums are his baby, but yeah. he's he's better at guitar than he gives himself credit really? for. Okay, nice, sure. yeah. But yeah, man, so uh, okay. the cast kind of speaks for itself here. I, we got Dave Grohl, obviously, Nate Mendel, um, Pat Smear, Taylor Hawkins, Rami ha- I don't Heffy? Jeffy? Jeffy? It's probably Hoffy. Yeah, think. something like that. Um, and then Chris uh, Shiflet. Those are the that's the that those are the Foo Fighters. Uh, you got Whitney Cummings. She's Samantha. Um, she's a she's Bob a pretty big show. comedian. And yeah, she's gorgeous. Uh, but she's and a, she, so rich. Yeah, she's that woman has wealthy. made a ton of money. She's yep. so talented. Yep, she's a very funny comedian. And she's she's done a little bit of in of acting in movies and stuff like that. She Jeff Garland, two broke girls too. Did she? That's her oh, show. Okay, yeah. My Logan loves. That show. She made a ton he of money keeps, off that he keeps shit. Talk, trying to talk me into watching it. It's good. Um, you've got Jeff Garland, uh, Jeremy Schill. I, I, I always he was in. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, what's the fucking Who? Jeff Garland? Um, I'll let you pull it up. Leslie Grossman, um, Barb. She plays Barb. She was from American Horror Story uh, mm-hmm. fame. She, she was in. It was cool to see her. And then a crazy one is Jenna Ortega. She yeah. was. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, she was Sky um, in in this one. I got some trivia about her as well coming yeah. up. Yeah. Um, you've got Marty Matalis. He was the caretaker. Um, oh, the caretaker's asking... name was Martin Matalis, so he was his name's Martin. Yeah. They cast him as yeah. Martin. Writers get lazy at some point in time. You <laughs> were yeah. using people's yeah. names. You were asking about Jeff Garland. Yes. Um, notable movies he's been in is uh, Studio Six Six Six. Surprise. Yeah, uh, <laughs> spoiler, <laughs> and that's it. Cool. Um, he did a voice in he did a voice in, in Toy Story, yep. which yeah. is uh, which is crazy. Yeah. And then who um, did he, who did he voice in Toy Story? Oh, uh, he did cut cut cuddles, Buttercup. He did Buttercup. 
Yeah, uh, know that one for sure. He he's Not. voiced himself and and Family Guy. He was in the um. Oh shit! What was that show on HBO? Mar- Maroon Maran. Oh, the, he's, he's it's the, like Louis C.K. Toy Story kinda. Four. He's oh, the, oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't gotten that far yeah, in the Toy yeah, Story yeah, series. Um, does a lot of voiceover work. Um, did Wally? Um, That's Mad fair. TV. That's fair. Wait, was I am Wally? a child? <laughs> yeah, he was, was the captain. He was the captain in Wally. Okay. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Wally. Wow. Wow. Oh, he played Cyclops in, in Austin Powers. That's yes, crazy. Yes, Whoa. yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. I forgot. Yeah, so he's been in some shit. Um, you've got Carrie King as Krug, and then uh, I love Will Forte. Yeah. So fucking When I nice. saw oh, him great. credited at the very beginning, I was like, I was like yes. it doesn't matter what he plays. It's going to be some <laughs> goofy gonna be dude that's going to be one like, of my what, favorite what, characters. What's he doing? It? What, the what's the he typical do? delivery guy trying to get his <laughs> shitty band out there. It's great. Yeah. It's great. Bone structure. Bone structure. And it might not be a shitty band. It might have been fucking fire. He had no chance to... The only thing I was anyone. missing from that bit of Will Forte's bit was actually hearing anything off of Bone right? Structure because yeah. that would have been. I'm yeah. sure it was filmed, I'm, but probably cut. Right, exactly. Um, so yeah, I mean that's your notable. Do you guys have anyone else? Any other cast members you want to bring up or want to talk about or have? Uh, I didn't hear you say Lionel Richie. Oh, oh yeah. Lionel Lionel Richie. So the reason I didn't say <laughs> yeah, Lionel, I was going to say the that. The reason I didn't say Lionel Richie is because I have a bit of trivia about him. Um, but yeah, he did show up as a cameo. Which that's a scene I want to talk about. Great oh, fucking definitely. cameo. That that's was a so scene. Good. That's that on awesome. my list yeah. for sure in big letters. That fucking song. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love that love song. That song. Which, I like that song. Hey, no, I love that song. <laughs> uh, Dylan's trivia: um, Nicole Richie, like Paris Hilton, Nicole Richie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Lionel Richie adopted her. That's yeah. why her last name's Nicole yeah. Richie. That's his so, daughter. If there was yeah. a relationship. Yeah, there is hundred percent. That poor guy had to deal with her. He wanted to deal with her. He adopted her. Yeah. Dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my girlfriend's gonna be so pissed. <laughs> her, all her Apple products are named Nicole Richie. Oh, really? <laughs> they are. Oh, Facts. God. Facts. <laughs> all right, so yeah, I mean that's all we have for cast here. Why don't we jump into some quotes? Let's do this. I want the quotes. You can't handle the quotes. Here's our favorite quote from this week's movie. All right, so. Um, we'll kind of just go right because there wasn't a ton of like re- I mean there was really goofy quotable material but there wasn't a ton that really stepped out stuck out to me. That's how I um, felt. So I, I I one of my favorite ones is from Taylor. Um, he's like, it's like you were musically constipated and now you just took the biggest <laughs> musical shit on all of us. Uh, yeah. When he finally like breaks out of his uh, his writer's block and and yeah, when Dave breaks out of his writer's block, that was that <laughs> line from Taylor, which was completely improvised was fucking great yeah so. that's amazing you gotta, gotta go. um so early on my my notes kind of run chronologically through the movie here but early on when they're setting this whole thing up they're at a round table with the record label rep they're trying to like get opening this scene or, well, yeah this is like scene of them. yeah they're in the meeting yeah. room yeah, they're and the they're trying to figure out what they want to do for the 10th album the dude record. from the record label's like uh i owe you guys a bunch of money you're gonna give me this record and dave's like i got nothing i got nothing it's all well. He says it's all up in my head, but which was code for I ain't got shit. Right. Right. And so, um, Dave's trying to hype up what he has in his head just to kind of keep the conversation moving. And he goes, "What I've got up in here, it's gonna blow your dick out into your mouth." <laughs> <laughs> and there's just a banter back and forth with that uh, between Dave yeah. and the record head, record label head. My mouth. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of lines in this movie that remind, I, and, I, and I hate to keep bringing it back to it, but it reminds me of like the, a, the, the lines and shit from the. Because yeah. there's a literal line in the Pick of Destiny, he's like, "What we've got's gonna set off fucking fireworks in your dick," like, yeah, yeah. Like, that's, that's a line that same thing, th- completely interchangeable. Like a lot of the dialogue, both of them well, and I'm shit. sure a lot of it was oh, yeah. nods to those guys for oh, sure. Yeah, I, for I sure. got I got a lot of Tommy Boy uh, vibes from that. Like you get a good look at a t-bone by shoving my head up a bull's ass by, by a butcher's ass or maybe it's my ass Classic. put a dick in my mouth who where's the dick gonna go <laughs> stick around you might find out uh so yeah i mean i actually like i i really enjoyed the movie so i actually have a number of quotes same that I really same enjoyed. my whole phone is full but um i don't know like i think the biggest one which is uh, something that I hope to hear one day from one of my employees is he's an ass flapping, dick slapping, one flew over the cuckoo's nest asshole. That was great. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. 
So that's Who said, like who's the one that said that? Uh, I think that was Pat Smear. Pat, yeah, yeah. So I mean, there was that, that one. Pat was fucking rolling guy. this. Pat, yeah, Pat had oh, yeah. some he, good he, shit. He had some good. He had he's some another guys. guy that's been around since like the beginning. He's left a couple times, like Dave did. Yeah, but he always comes back and tours right. and does stuff. Um, with him. So right, he's because they're the snacks. Yeah. I was right. yeah. I was initially <laughs> thinking he was the weakest actor out of the group until and, and he kind of quote unquote is I mean it's a band playing themselves so you have yeah. to take a lot of Let's it with a grain fair, of salt they're all bad they're not actors. professional actors yeah. they're oh, musicians no. right. yeah. and but they lean into it so hard that it comes all the way back around makes it funny yeah. and it makes like, it that's well, the I best think part it makes, I, yeah it makes it work I think Pat smears like acting and put it in quotes yeah um, I mean that's shit I think that's his personality uh, I mean you see him in interviews I mean he's very just stale He's well, a very yeah. stale. I mean, even his stage presence. He, I was going to say, even on stale. stage, he doesn't do yeah. much. Like he, he he's a can, quiet, he reserved guy. Rhythm, yeah. But he's not like Dave running around. But there's and, there's roles you fill in a band, just yeah. like anything else, yeah. and that's. Like I mean, you guys would fucking know. Yeah, that's whatever. Jesus. What do you guys? There's know? only four of us, so we have to play more than one role. Yeah. Often, yeah. 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 often. Josh, did you have any quotes? Uh, yeah, there, I got a couple actually. Um, this is a little bit later. They're uh, walking along the fence, and. Uh, Rami sits there and has this bird call. Yeah. And so I can't was remember who you? it was behind Did you just him. make it's that like, noise? Yeah. It was like, I thought we had a yellow warbler infestation. Just <laughs> Rami just turns around and goes, it was a thrush. And then Samantha is come this way, my little thrush. And <laughs> over by the pool. He's so like, that was like, a thrush, you asshole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're supposed to know. I love, yeah, I love that it's like blatantly, like you're a piece of shit for not knowing what bird I just sounded like. That you're not like. an ornithologist? Yeah. Fuck you. Well, the fact that, you know, he's like, I thought we had a yellow warbler infestation. No, it was, it was not a yellow warbler. It was warbler. a wooden thrush. Was a wooden thrush. <laughs> Speak. Like, you guys have uh, bird watching hobbies outside the band? I mean, <laughs> That's, yeah, that was a good one. I think Dylan. they just became my second favorite band after Coldplay. That that's, was that's on that was mine. Yep, that was mine as well. He that, stole that, it. That, that was the best line from Will Forte throughout the throughout the movie. Yeah. That was his best one. Yeah. yeah. So speaking, of, I have one more quote, real quick. And if we want to come back to quotes, we can. Um, but speaking of Rami, um, Rami is trying to help Dave through his writer's block, mm-hmm. and Rami's like this holistic kind of hippy dippy sort of character, and he goes. Have you tried meditating, Dave? <laughs> and Dave just gets this violent look on his face, and he goes, "Fuck meditating in the ass, Rami." <laughs> <laughs> just viscerous, that oh, viscerally, is the just so most good. Most I have related to Dave Grohl ever. Yeah, <laughs> and, and oh, that, is, sure. that is like I don't know if you guys ever watched the <clears throat> shout out to to uh, first week from first or first week feast, um, but they do the show Hot Ones. Yeah, and he had yep. Dave Grohl on there. Dave Grohl in this movie. Plays, I mean, obviously he's playing himself, but his like his lines and everything are things that Dave Grohl would say to you if you met him on the street. Right. It was he was playing himself perfectly because he did, and that's that's the best way to do it if you're doing a movie about your yourself. It's just be yourself, exactly. and he did he did it fucking. It was great. It was fantastic. I guess everything that he said, everything that he did, I'm like Dave Grohl would say this, and I got a concert, or he would say this to like one of his I buddies or something like that. Song. Dylan, or, did you or, have any? Or he'd say it as he's riding by the Southern Baptist Church. <laughs> yeah. Rolling him on the back of a truck. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Love that man for that. Yeah, he's amazing. Um, I mean, the Coldplay one, that got stolen from me. Um, yeah. But the, the, the part that really got me was, uh, and I, it's just because I fucking related to a Carrie King playing Krug, um, or Krug. Is it Krug or Krug? Krug. They always pronounce it Krug, yeah. Um, but like he goes in there and they like wired all up the the studio oh, for recording. I'm sorry, <laughs> there's so many fucking people in here. Yeah. Um, but he he says like, dude, who wired this house? A bunch of fucking mental patients. And that's <laughs> right before he gets electrocuted. And, oh, you didn't and, take mine. And I just, um, well, okay, all right. Um, I just I fucking related to it. That's why I saved that one is because, because I mean setting up all this like shit. Forty minute I mean, update on your Apple when we got here and you had to. Rewire everything and and and, and the mental patient that set it up was actually you. Yeah, yeah. Blow me. Before the um, anybody yeah. see Shutter Island? <laughs> right. right. Hey, shout out to a future episode, by the way. Yeah, Martin Scorsese. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, what I related to it because in 
multiple aspects of my life. Um, I mean, doing podcast shit, yeah. cable management, uh, playing guitar, radio, fucking oh, cable management, radio, right, yeah. um, doing DJ shit. And How then many times I mean, you even walked in to set something, I'm like, what? fucking moron trying right. to do anytime this. you have to travel right. to I a mean, venue even, that yeah. has house sound is anytime yeah. that I try oh, to plug fuck. every anytime that I try to plug something in and Dylan comes by out me he's like Jesus Right, yeah. I mean, but idiot. even <laughs> even my nine to five working for the intertent company, um, I mean, going into a customer's house and their fucking router and their computer, and it's just a fucking rat's nest uh, of cables. Oh, you would like, lose I'll, your mind if you walked into my home office. You I, fucking, I, I, I shit that's you why not. We record here. It, yeah, I'd there, have to hide my rope and my guns and everything. There, <laughs> there was <laughs> there was one place that was up. so fucking bad. I walked into a customer's house and it was just a tangled mess. And I, I just, I stared at it for a solid 10 seconds and I went, uh-uh, nope, he, he turns can't do it. And I walked that. out of the house, I went out by my car, I smoked a cigarette and I had to really talk myself <laughs> into it. Like, it's okay, just unplug every single fucking cable, straighten it out, run it. And I it, I did take a before and after because, I mean. You yeah. had to. I imagine it, it, it was good. I imagine a little that pat on the back yeah. after it's all done, right? I imagine that situation being like that, that, that scene in the movie, I don't remember which movie. I know that they parodied it in Wayne's World. But the scene where the guy's standing there and he's like slowly looks back to the camera and you just see one tear yeah. come yeah. out of his eye. Yeah, oh, the yeah. old the old Native it's, American litter yeah. commercial. Yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. yeah that's, that's exactly yeah. it. Yeah, that's I just exactly imagine it. that that's that's what Dylan's face looked like. It's, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, but from that same scene, uh, so <laughs> which is a very rock and roll type thing, a very like metalhead type thing. Krug gets electrocuted. He dies, and they're oh, they're, they're sitting there. And he's mine, trying to wake you? him up. He's like, Krug, Krug. Krug, Jägermeister! Jägermeister, Krug! <laughs> and you just stole my other one. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that that oh, is so man. fucking That was perfect. great. But uh, yeah, so is, do you guys do you guys have any more? I'm, I well, got, you guys said you had a lot, so... I say I have one more two... that was kind of towards the end okay. of the end of it. Uh, this was after um, Dave got possessed. Yeah. And um, he, he's starting to get sick. He's spewing bile everywhere. And it's real nasty. <laughs> 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 He just the scene focuses on his face and he just yaks super hard off off to the side. And his quote right after that goes, No more oat milk beer bongs for Davy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what the hell so is that? Dumb. <laughs> yeah, let's move on a little bit. So let's try. Let's try to move on a little let's bit. Do some scenes. Yeah, why don't we talk about some scenes? Some yeah, of our favorite yeah, yeah, scenes. Yeah, yeah. Say hello to our favorite scene. And now, our favorite scene. This is a sceneable movie. It's yeah. very oh, scene. Yeah, a lot of really scene cool driven. Yeah. Um, I can't decide which one's my favorite. There's three of them. Um, so one, the, so visually, my the 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 most well I think well shot scene in this movie and and perfectly edited was when uh, uh, Pat and what is his name. Uh, not Rami. When Pat and Nate, Nate yeah. are they, Dave catches him after he's possessed. After he kills Taylor, um, he catches him hiding and shit. And then he's chasing him through the house. And every turn, oh, yeah. there's another demon and yeah. shit. And it was the only part in this movie that actually, like, a couple times, I'm like, oh shit. Like it yeah. kind of freaked me out a little bit. It was actually it was actually creepy, but the cinematography was fucking phenomenal there. It was good. Um, Dave Grohl was legitimately creepy and legitimately scary, chasing yeah. after him as a as a demon. So that one was cool. Um, the basement scene where Dave gets possessed originally was was awesome. That was also it's made this whole fucking movie had major throwbacks and major callouts to Evil Dead, like the whole book. Uh, yeah. being in, you yep. know being yeah. made of human Total, skin that's totally right. that is the book of the dead yeah like and, and then like the uh, uh, it basically being a living thing um, the the scene where Dave comes out of the fucking pool um, after he falls into the pool the scene that he comes out he comes yeah. out in the pose of the girl climbing out of her grave yeah in evil dead yep. it was a direct callback to that um, and then the other scene that I have is Dave and uh, the uh, uh, Jeremy the played by Jeff Garland where they're both just repeatedly kicking each other in the nuts. Yeah. Just yeah. back and forth oh, kicking each other in the nuts was fucking fantastic. But those are my favorite scenes out of the movie. Uh, what do you guys got? Um, I might take any of your guys' because this to me was like, I was having trouble. I was trying to take as many notes as I could so I had something to go off of. But at that point, I was like, this scene is like, oh, my God. 
Um, so Rami and Whitney Cummings' character have been flirting throughout the movie. <laughs> He's trying to get with her. You know, it's the yeah, whole dude. thing. And so he finally I would too. is, God. you know, crossing third base, coming home, and they're laying down in the bed, getting hot and heavy. And um, the whole thing was they're trying to be quiet so Dave doesn't find out. Well, it pans to Dave being under the bed while they're getting going, and he just takes a chainsaw, and it comes through Whitney Cummings' head into Rami as well, and then slices them plus the bed all the way down in half. Yeah, dude. And I was like, I just, my notes here said, the scene um, where Dave sawing Rami and Whitney in half from under the bed, holy shit. Yeah. That was so my note. Did, didn't they have some kind of George Thorogood tune in the background so there? There's, I have a bit of trivia about Jackal. it. Because there's, yeah. It, yeah, yeah. Been, it should have been bad to the bone is what it should have been. That well, was a missed Jackal, opportunity. I guess, so because be, that's an actual fucking song. Yeah, it and is. And yeah. the, the guitar solo is a fucking chainsaw. And, and exactly, oh, that, so that, that, that's true. I forget about that trivia part. Yeah, that is the, the guitarist from Jackal has a chainsaw, a picture of a chainsaw on his guitar. Yeah. They played that song. Um, well, the, he, they're getting Bias. fucking cut in half. Yeah. And another interesting thing is, like, everyone thinks that that scene had, like, heavy CGI. Like, that was all practical effects. Like, those That's were two, the yeah. Sam, Sam Raimi vibes yeah. that you yeah, get there. That's, he's one of my more, favorite scary movie directors. Yep, absolutely. And, and he's notorious for being, like, not anti-CGI, but is, like, last resort CGI. He wants to do it because he just real. did, like, the, the Doctor Strange multiverse. Yeah, and that was had, a like, huge the departure. Yeah. Ever fucking seen and the movie. he <laughs> was original director for the Spider-Man franchise, mm-hmm. the Tobey mm-hmm. Maguire yep. franchise, yep. and that was lacing in a lot of CGI, but a he ton. did a ton of practice. He's a big right. practical effects. Yeah, which is, which he's like that old school director. Yeah. And with me being like a huge Lord of the Rings fan, like practical CGI, or sorry, practical effects are my go-to. If I were to ever, in some fucking alternate universe, direct a movie or be able to work on a movie and had the say in the type of effects that are done, like 90% would be practical. Right. Because it just, it, it sucks you so you much more than a movie. And you can yeah, tell. You can, you can tell. And it's oh, actually yeah, absolutely. typically more cost effective as well. 100%. So oh, yeah. not well, only. They, it's age, a, they age rather well too. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, for sure. You and know, that's practical uh, effects. Yeah. With, with Lord of the Rings, the big explosions and all the other crazy shit that happens, a lot of that was real fucking explosions right. and crazy Peter shit. Right. Peter Jackson so, was way ahead of his time on that. For one. sure. For sure. sure, but yeah, that that scene was that scene was like one of the most like impactful and gory scenes. And they said that after they were done filming that scene, that there was a good like two to three inches of standing blood in the room. Mm. Fake blood I believe, believe room. it because it was spraying, spraying so splatters crazy. all over the ceiling, the walls, yeah. everything. It was resetting nice. for that scene. De- would definitely take, a callback. You to can maybe shoot that scene twice was, in a day. I was going to say that was probably a one take shot. Like yeah, you don't, oh yeah, no, one and done. Yeah. So for a lot of, I listen to a lot of podcasts that do like behind the scenes stuff for shows. And is whatever. after the credits one of them? One, after the credits is one. <laughs> um, hey, they yo. talk about like the the business side of it and like what goes into the production side of it and um they were talking about an episode of the office where michael proposes to holly and the sprinklers the go down right yeah and so th- they rig those sprinklers to go on cue because right. they're filming a scene and they're they had to strip that set install a tray under the floor that caught all that water so it didn't damage the subfloor and then build the no set back shit. over the top of it and so when they'd hit those sprinklers that would I mean you could film that scene once a day yeah. and they got it they shot it twice and took the first take that's I think. wild but yeah that's yeah. the kind of stuff that goes into that yeah you know, which it's is insane. It's so impressive and that's why I love films and, and and you know TV shows so much is the work that's done behind the scenes that you don't really see or know about is is sometimes what's the most fucking impressive thing about a movie so For sure oh definitely. got to, uh, Rob you got any scenes look I got a bunch of scenes that I love <laughs> like so I'm a huge like gore and horror movie Same, fan bro um, so like <clears throat> the opening scene where Jenna Ortega gets her head bashed in with, with a hammer. hammer and you got her like femur sticking out of her head. <laughs> oh my God. That, I love that. Whew, that got my blood rushing. Um, <laughs> so, serious, some serious serial killer vibes coming. Rob from and this I were and watching and that scene. And I'm over here in the corner going, "Oh God, I can't watch." I mean, Rob and I are watching Rob's that the- scene. <laughs> yeah, Rob and I are watching that scene, and we're almost always on the same wavelength. <laughs> I just go, "The hip bones connected to," and we both go, Lay "Nothing." We <laughs> just say nothing because <laughs> it's shooting out the side of her body. Oh, um, that's great. So, I mean, there's that, um, but yeah, no, serial killers is like. That's kind of like my so, silent, silent fascination. Obsession. Yeah, I, I'm right I there with you. Love dude. learning. Did about you like Dahmer? Did you like the Netflix 
You know, I, Dahmer. I didn't. Not it wasn't like really. It. it wasn't really gory. No, it, it, yeah. it, it was really just the psychological aspect right. of all of it, which was, right. in my opinion, a bit more chilling than right. If they and would see, be shown, yeah, that's, that's like the, the big DVD. thing that yeah. I liked about it right. was that it showed like his mind because that's what I'm interested in with the serial killers. Yeah. I don't give a shit what they did. Right. I mean, I do. Well, yeah, it's horrendous. But, it's monstrous. But right. you know, but what their thought process of a why is what's more yeah, yeah, yeah. intriguing. Um, and, and Evan Peters is a fucking king stud. Of that oh He's yeah, so yeah, good yeah, at that absolutely. shit for sure. Um, um, you know, another one for the the gore factor was when uh, the delivery driver uh, <clears> Will Forte just gets beheaded by garden shears. Yeah. That one was a great one. one it actually that brings me, me out. back to a different movie that uh, I saw like 2003. Um, and I don't even remember the name of it, but it was like this lady trying to seduce her husband, but her husband was like so uh, like whatever disenchanted that <clears throat> she would like, she went into the bathroom. She took like, Big scissors, cut off her, cut off her lips. Mm-hmm. Took garden shears, cut off her breasts. You know, brutal. Like, yeah. Took scissors to anything that could be bad, and yeah. then walks out. And he's like sobbing, oh like, God. "Oh, honey, what did we do?" And then like they go to the bedroom, and you know they start getting into it. Jesus they're both, Christ! <laughs> they're both crying, and then she just turns the garden shears on his lower extremities, and I was like, "Ooh." Oh, God, Ooh. brings back those vibes. Brutal as fuck. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I, along the lines of the gore factor in this movie, I love the, and I hate saying this, but, like, the symbol decapitation of Taylor Hawkins. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dude, it was that was like that was, that was like some Wild Wild West, Will, <laughs> you know, the Will Smith Wild Wild West, where it's yeah. like yeah. those Hawkins. saw blades that track and, you yeah. know, decapitate it's like, everybody. It's sticking in the wall and, like, yeah. his head just Still chilling there, there and his body just, like, drops. Slowly like, yeah. descends and Perfection. spurts <laughs> gallons the, of blood. Sam Raimi blood spray. Yeah, oh, yeah. the Kill Bill the, style. Yeah. 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 yeah, very. For sure. Yeah, I, I was really bummed out in the scene that the delivery guy died when they pulled, they grabbed his head and lifted up his head. I'm like, you guys couldn't have done a better prosthetic. I head. literally said it looked, like, it looked nothing, nothing like, like him Will Forte. At like, all. what's going on here? But, but I mean, again, very small budget, and yeah, it's a know, fuck when, around. When type. the band's playing playing with their own money, you know, yeah, they'll, yeah, they'll save a. It, they're like, it works. That's yeah, basically it works. Yeah, so. Uh, you got any? Yeah, actually, I do. I've, I've got uh, one that really stuck out in my brain, and this kind of goes back to. Uh, Carrie King being in it, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, since uh, Slayer has become defunct and broken up, and mm-hmm. they're they're not doing anything anymore. Yeah. And, you know, Carrie's been out there just bitching up a storm about you know how Slay- he felt not Slay- working. Slayer ended too yeah. soon, right? And, yeah. You know, he had more. He's got more in him, and and all that. So mm-hmm. I kind of got a little bit of a sick satisfaction when. He, he reached back in there and he got fried. Yeah. Yeah. Like, got I'm just like, <clears throat> yes, killing him off, killing <laughs> him off. You know, I mean, as a guitar player, he's fucking awesome. I love him to death. Yeah, I, but he's kind you know, of got, an asshole. He is. He is a bit of an he's asshole. A prick. He's a prick. Uh, well, and, and that honestly, it was the whole of Slayer was a, a band of. People who were kind of assholes. Yes, like, they they really all were. of them were really yeah not good. There's not I'm sure there's people. a litany of stories that will come out oh, in I'm some sure documentary at yeah. some point in about time how about they were them. Just not great or books yeah. or but yeah, stuff. there was a bit of satisfaction. There's to a little little, little bit of that sick satisfaction, cried. you know, just like ah, you, you got what you got, got what you were gonna, <laughs> gonna, gonna get. Yeah. Exactly for sure. Um, do you got any other ones? You... Uh, and you know I, you know, agree with you the the basement basement scene where he's down there yeah. discovering the. The, the recording from the previous band. And right. He's, just, he's playing that. He's like, yeah, this is it. This is the next album. This right. is it. And, you know, finally mm-hmm. getting rid of that writer's block and getting and possessed, get, getting possessed yeah. and then yeah. going up and then all the shenanigans ensue. Badass. Yeah. yeah, for sure. It, the, the whole movie just gave me such a an evil dead yeah. Oh, very much so. so like, speaking of like all these directors and movies we've been referencing throughout mm-hmm. this whole segment, um, did anybody catch who helped produce the music? John Carpenter. John yeah. Carpenter of he Halloween did the music fame. Halloween. Of the, yeah. for the and, movie, you can, and he was also in the movie yeah. as their their uh, the guy behind the board. Yeah, the old him. dude behind the the soundboard. Was that and, was that John? Was yeah, John wow. Carpenter. Yeah, Boy, and um, which is great. It's it's such an homage to horror movies to have John top Carpenter, to bottom. the, oh, the king of horror movies, soundtrack. Well, and you can even yeah. hear. I mean, there was a direct the corollary 
to the oh, intro there, music there was, there was from a, the original the Halloween, Halloween yeah. theme. Yeah. 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 yeah, I was like, oh, I'm not gonna lie. When I saw like John Carpenter's like, instrument, like, yeah. instruments, it, it yeah. was great. Mm-hmm. When I saw Carpenter behind the board, I swear to God, I thought it was George Carlin for a second. He looked oh, just yeah. like him. Yeah, uh, the guy from Saw. Oh, oh shit! Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah, okay. Guy. yeah, the yeah. main dude, Jigsaw. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. My my favorite scene in the movie. I didn't ask you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you! No one's oh, yeah, no Dylan's one's, no one's taken it. Dylan, uh, no one's no yeah, one said it. it. Is uh, when he, when when uh, Dave first goes to the basement and plays the tape. Um, I mean that fucking scene, the aura with it. Yeah. Um, I mean. When when the song starts fucking playing, it's not a Foo Fighters song no. by no, any means. No. It's very doom stoner metal. I'm a big Sabbath fan, and that is it definitely hit right in, in, there. in that definitely, realm. Yeah. Um, and right I don't give a fuck what your preferred genre is. There are some tasty riffs in no that doubt. forty yeah. minutes. Foo song. Fighters came out with an album, a full metal album after this, that was in the genre of like. Fucking thrash and heavy, like screaming metal. That's cool. And yeah. w- with with this with that that band, it, it's under a different name, right. but it's the Foo Fighters writing an entire metal album based off of this oh, movie. And yeah. that's so cool. The whole them crooked vultures. Is, they, they they can do it. Well, so the whole oh, yeah. fucking album you, slaps. You bring that up. Heavy as hell. The scene where they start jamming on that riff as a band yeah initially the of l the key of l sharp. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? Okay, Dave, whatever. But. I just was watching that scene and I go, they captured exactly what it's like when you come to band practice with this exciting riff yeah. and you don't That's know how the ask. guys are going to gonna yeah. do it. So like a lot of times how we start songs, not every song, but a lot of the times I'll come up with a riff and I'm like, okay, this sounds cool. It's not in time. It's not on beat. That's these guys' yeah. job. It's just an idea. Right. I'm just yeah, like, it's, it's a thought I'm, just throw, I'm just sticking things to the wall, yeah. right? And so I'll bring it to practice after I've been jamming it out a little bit and you know, we'll, it's like forging raw iron. You just keep at it. You keep at keep it until until, it until you refine into yeah. a song, or you decide to scrap it, or mm-hmm. you save it for later, whatever. Yeah. Um, but just when you hit that one riff after, especially after a long period of not being able to come up with anything that yeah, you really you have enjoy, that writer's constipation. Because sometimes yeah. you're writing songs to fill out a set. Sometimes you're yeah. writing songs to record on an album. Yeah. Sometimes you're just trying to backlog things so that when you get busy, future, you can you go can back to it. Yeah. So there's a lot of different motivational factors behind writing something. Um, but there's nothing better than when you find that one riff, you're like, this is the riff. The song and that, is and you yeah. see, based off of this entire thing. And yeah. you see the persona of Dave change when he realizes, like, this is the fucking riff. This right. is what we're going to do. You get and hyped. That, that was one of the reasons that we, why we agreed on this one to this movie to do is because you guys are currently in the process correct of of recording yep. Yep. your guys' yep. album so yep. like i was like i was like this is going to i was like i was like i wonder how much of this is going to ring true to what they're yeah, going through yeah that, that was a is, huge motivation as soon as that scene came up i'm just sitting here going god this, this that's that relentless is, this is, when we wrote relentless this that was the is, first this is the new writing one. process yeah relentless was the first new song we had with our our current vocalist mitch and so from top to bottom all four of us worked on it and it is one of our favorite ones to play it is a burner and the crowd has loved it the few times that we've gotten to play it at shows. And like we cold call that breakdown at the end of the set because that breakdown's so heavy and it just makes you want to break the floor. Yeah, dude. And it's it, I, I figured that like with the whole recording process being done in this one along the lines of like a horror movie and stuff, too. I'm like, well, they can bring some stories in on the horrors of actually because re- it's it's fun, like probably 90 percent fun. But there's the the chunk of recording an album that's not fun. The repetitive of doing it over and over and over again yeah. you are is not a good fucking time. Right. Josh yeah. can speak directly to that. Yeah, you know, being stepping up and you know doing the the capture for this album, it's it's been like just one headache yeah. after another, and then when we finally get past that point that's been holding us up, yeah. it's like, oh, we got this figured out. Let's go, and then then it's just it's great times until we hit right. that next roadblock, and right. Then, well, because you can you know, do a lot. In shout editing. out to scratch tracks, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and room recordings, and room recordings, <laughs> and hardware, and computers deleting up. half your shit. I, oh, no, oh, no. Yeah, that's that's well, always you can, fun. You can do a lot of shit in editing, but like you want to play the actual like what you're gonna what you're trying to get out and what you're trying to record. You want to play it as perfectly as possible, exactly. Which yeah. is yeah. such a fucking pain to do when you've got all, a well, you've and, got eyes on you, b you've got 
something recording. So you're like, this has got to be. And everybody's a, 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 everybody's a producer. Right. Everybody's mm-hmm. a producer now, right? Whether you're doing a podcast, you're recording, you're on TikTok, you're streamer, right. whatever you're doing. Mm-hmm. So many people now, this equipment is so readily available because everybody's doing it. Mm-hmm. That also means most people know what they're listening to and right. know what they're talking about. So when it comes to approaching an album too, it's like, okay, we want to be able to do this, but like the people who know the work that take it takes to do this yeah. will know where you cut corners. If it's overproduced, it will over be talked editing, about. Yeah. That is your right. fingerprint yeah. out there in the world. There's so many albums like uh, uh, fucking a date remembers. You're welcome. Like that whole album sounded so fucking just overproduced and really like. It, it's just you, you couldn't you could feel that there wasn't like this crazy passion behind it that you usually get with one of their albums. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, I'm listening to it with Isaiah and like immediately we're like, yeah, I'm not feeling it. Like I'm not I can I can tell and I'm not feeling it. So, yeah. I And with how you guys are, like I said, you know, pre, on our previous episode, you guys are having fun doing it, which, at, like I said, 90 percent of the recording process is a good time. But there's that there's still that shit. <laughs> prospect yeah, of like still the point this still is like, man i gotta go and not do this easy and yeah for sure yeah, for sure yep, yeah I'm, I'm glad right. we, we could talk about uh, this one with you guys because it's yeah, yeah it's it's a little more relatable to what you guys it, are doing right it now. fit right in with like our past you and i tyler and yeah, then yeah. um what we're you know kind of currently going into and what we've been interested in ever since right so, for so sure it's yeah. a great way to wrap it all together yep so Dylan, did you do you have any? Did we get you with scenes? Do you have any scenes? <laughs> the basement scene. Uh, oh yeah, that's, yeah. And that yeah. one. The only other thing I had to add was all the like the visual aspects of it. The yeah. Um, I mean, the fucking. It really was a beautiful the, like. I mean, it just looked cool. Looking it looked. Movie, yeah. I mean, all satanic and shit. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. The fucking raccoon. Well, like, there's all no yeah. there's no up. new horror. Like there are quote unquote new horror movies, yeah. but they're all. It's all cookie cutter, Cutting, right? Yeah. It's there's, all the there's, same. Yeah. There's definitely a form. And, right. mm-hmm. you know, there's been really good horror movies done since the Alfred Hitchcock days, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, yeah. that's like the pinnacle and everything yeah, is a derivative era. of yeah. Psycho, Psycho yeah. the Birds, the, the standard, et, cetera, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that Boris Korob. Um, Yeah, big time. And then you have the flip when you get to the, the to the time when they're doing like Halloween and the Friday slashers, the 13th. The well, and then everything's reboot, 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 reboot then sequel, sequel, number sequel. Number sequel. Two, number, yeah, exactly. So it's exactly. hard to find fresh ideas, and this wasn't right. necessarily a fresh idea, In but fact, it, it was... To be fair, it was one of the least fresh... I mean, because like, even break oh. it down to like the raccoon scene where like... This raccoon is dead. It's also now possessed, and it's alive, and it's moving. Yeah. That is a pet scene cemetery. straight out of fucking, well, Pet cemetery, but straight out of Evil Dead with the fucking deer the on the deer wall that's yeah. possessed and starts talking. Yeah. Like, it's this, <laughs> there's, it, there's a lot of callbacks and pulls from other horror movies, which I really enjoy. Being a horror nerd, like I really enjoy seeing right. that in there. But it was also original along the lines of like, the, it's it's a band doing it. Right. It's, they're, they're in it's cheeky. Trying, it's like... They and that's what whole, I was going like, to say. Metal side, like the whole idea of metal being like a product of like, a, in some people's eyes of like Satanism and, right. like, and like, you know, demonic shit. Like metal has that stigmatism. They took that, flipped it on its head and fucking shoved it in your face. It was like, right. well, this ma- album is going to be made by, made by, by brutality. Like, and yeah. yeah. Um, so that's what I was going to say, too, is like everything is a copy of everything else, but they try to act like it's not yeah. versus this entire movie was built on the bones of referencing all their favorite horror movies that they've either had some hand in mm-hmm. or just, just love, enjoyed. absolutely yeah. love. Yeah. And so that's when you see the cameos come through and, right. yeah. and the scenes <laughs> and everything like it just I liked that they pushed so far into it that it ended up working out in their favor. Right. Because if you because there's just that fine it, line of yeah. being like, this is dumb. Yeah. And it was dumb. Don't get me wrong. It, yeah. It was a, it's a dumb because it's a, a, it's a horror way. comedy. So it's in supposed to be dumb, but it was mm-hmm. dumb. It, it was dumb that it became smart. It was did. dumb, funny in the sense of like a Will Ferrell type movie, right? Right. Where it's yeah. like so ridiculous, it spins all the way back that it around. Works. Yeah. And yeah. It works. For sure. So yeah. I, mean, I don't think I don't think anyone was supposed to get legit scared from no. it. No. No. Uh, no. This no. wasn't this. Th- it was ridiculousness from I mean, the yeah. start think, to finish. I think their you target really demographic like the, is us. You know, one hundred percent. I mean, metal metalheads who enjoy horror movies, right? Like, who enjoy yeah. gore and horror movies? That's basically it. I gore mean, you can really movies, tell it, if you will. Gore I'm movies. I'm sorry. I oh, know I liked it. Um, you can really tell with like the overuse of blood, the overuse of gore. Like it's it's like okay, it's to the and Sam Raimi does it as well. It's like okay, it's meant to be silly. Mm-hmm. Like it's right. meant to yeah. be. This is now so, a bit. It's, and yeah. it's so over Tarantino, the, top, the Tarantino shit. Like it's a, it's right. meant to be goofy. Right. Um, you know, it, it's the, the him puking as much as he puked, like him throwing up that much. It's like okay, I it, I get it. 
it's supposed to be fucking the hard sh- egregious the as cinematography fuck, yeah. on that shot too because he's looking right at the camera and, oh, yeah. and it's and, and it's, it's clearly it's, being, well it's clearly being pumped out of out him. of a tube oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, but he had the one to where he like turns that. his head sideways and yeah you can well, he's tell looking a tube, he's looking right at the camera yeah, at one the, point and it shoots out and I'm like that's that well is done. in him yeah like mm-hmm. he, you know there there's not very many ways you can do that that was not computer generated right yeah that, no, was, was, no, that was that was real that was very practical. very well done yeah um the only computer generated i could think i could possibly see with that is having a tube come up in front of his mouth and just having to edit out that tube in front of him they might but have he, that's but probably they might have, they green, they yeah. might have had to like lay it over green him screen, and green the screen actual it. tube and yeah, yeah I, I, I could that's see that probably but, how they actually had it but I, I love breaking down scenes and like guessing how how they made it work trying to reverse engineer it yeah, like, yeah. They, they probably did that yeah that's, that's my, my favorite stuff too if you ever if you ever get a chance check out the the youtube channel uh, VFX artists react. Yeah, they go through and they break down different crazy oh, special yeah. effects and different practical effects as well. And I they, follow a lot of accounts like that on yeah, Instagram dude, too. So great, so great. But yeah, so um, as long as we don't have any other scenes, maybe I will jump into the fucking trivia. Yeah, sound good, Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> So Taylor Hawkins admitted on several talk show appearances, including Howard Stern and Jimmy Kimmel, that he refused to bother learning the script at all and improvised (laughs) every single one of his lines, deciding to just say whatever he felt in the moment, which you can tell that you can tell. He was very off the cuff and it it helped with the acting side of things, I think. Right. it, It made it a little more natural because it was just him bullshitting, basically. Um, we talked about this a little bit. The red 1995 Dodge 1500 Ram van that was used uh, in the film is the same van used on the Foo Fighters' first U.S. tour to promote their debut album um, that it was going to be used for, again, for the band's 25th anniversary van tour in 2020, but then it was canceled due to COVID. Um, instead, they used the van for the for the actual movie. Um, this film was filmed secret in during the pandemic, which I mentioned as well. Uh, a little bit, which is it's crazy because I didn't really hear about that it was gonna be happening until like a month before it came out, and yeah. I was like, "Oh fuck!" Like, yeah, it was a surprise yeah. to everybody. Like a Foo Fighters horror fucking metal movie. This is gonna be amazing. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, just the name Studio Six Six Six. You had great. to. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. telling my grandma about watching that movie. I was telling her we were coming out to this podcast <laughs> and stuff. I go, "You're probably not gonna like this one as much, but it was called Studio Six Six Six. Oh, and a typical, my grandma's no. the sweetest woman ever, and she's just like, that sounds like so much fun. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Most, like, Christian woman I know. Yeah. I love it. Is that, like you is that your no grandma idea. that came out to... Uh... Yeah, she, Fright Night? yeah, she won the costume yeah. contest at Fright Night. Shout what out, the fuck? Fuck? Shout out to she... Carol Storer. She's a real MVP. Carol, you fucking stud. She's That's awesome. <laughs> so when Dave Grohl was in the cellar, a Buck Rogers ray gun is visible. It's the same gun that's on the Foo Fighters' first album cover. I saw that. Yeah. I didn't catch it until I until like my second watch through. My second watch through, I was like, is that... That's the fucking ray gun from their album. That's like that's awesome. That's cool. Um, when Dave Grohl raises out of the pool, he mimics the pose of the woman on the poster from the Evil Dead, the the original the original nineteen eighty one Evil Dead. That's the one of the first callbacks to another horror movie. Another one, which involves uh, Will Forte, is when the delivery guy first drives up to the house and he stops halfway up the stairs and looks up to the light. That's from The Exorcist when wow. the priest is walking up the stairs and he stops and he looks up at the light. It's the same cut from that from that movie. It's the same thing. It's a callback to it. I didn't talk much about the Lionel Richie part because of this this bit that I have. But Dave Grohl revealed that in an, in an interview that Lionel Richie himself decided on set during the scene to to drop the cluster of f bombs. Thank God, because that was so funny. I guess what they had written for him was a very like respectable like you know calm reaction to it, and he came out and just fired at fucking Dave yeah. for. For, for that was the that was a was quote so we good. should have gotten in there. I know we referenced it earlier, but he's like, he's playing. Dave's playing "Hello." Yeah, you know, he's got this little piano. It's this somber little moment, right. and he's trying to, you know, help his writer's block. And and Lionel Richie comes out of the dark, and he goes, "Man, I like that song." No, I love that fucking song. Get your own fucking song. <laughs> I like playing that song. song. So it's my fucking song. That was another good scene is uh, when he gets writer's block and he starts playing 
Oh, in his did. own song. Yeah, so right. yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. Playing, he's that was like, a yeah, great that's, song. That's Everlong. Ever right. You wrote, you wrote it, it 15 20, years, yeah. years ago. I, 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 another reason I like yeah, it is all my life. Fucking, wrote that. it's fucking relatable. Right. Is I've done that. Like I've been like, okay, all right, I gotta sit down. New I riff, have this to new fucking riff is write. Fucking sick. Like, I gotta oh. start writing, and then I just start playing a song I've been playing since I was like 17 or some shit. Like that sounds good. Oh, it's because I've been playing it for my whole fucking. Were trivia's? Yeah, I got a bit. Um, so we talked about Carrie. King being Krug, mm-hmm. the roadie. Um, that was an interesting little cameo. Um, director B.J. McConnell had previously helmed the movie, or sorry, Hatchet 3 and a trilogy of Slayer vigil- videos. So Hatchet 3 is a really bad horror movie that he did. Um, those yeah. directing experiences combined with having operated <clears throat> camera and steady cam on countless genre films, um, which he, he, he'd been in some really big fucking movies operating cameras. Um but uh, Dave said he knew our language, um, and it was really easy to work with him because he took yeah. very it, he needed very little direction. He could blend the two worlds, and I, that's smart. That was very smart. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the for caretaker now. was supposed to be one with the overgrown mansion, so his makeup design incorporated roots and moss growing through and out of his skin, which I thought was like it, it's something that you saw and you're like, oh, I get this. Like right. I get I get why they did it, that makeup it's and stuff. Not out of place. Yeah, at all. No. no, it works really really well. No. This is a long one, so. Tony Gardner and the all-terrain crew devised an ingenious, gory effect where a couple of engaged in amorous activities both get sawn in half by a chainsaw that rises up from beneath their bed. I wanted to one-up the arrow coming through Kevin Bacon's neck in the original Friday the 13th. I don't know if you guys are familiar with yeah. that, with that uh, yeah. scene. Kevin yeah. And see how far we could go with it, and then they just didn't stop us. <laughs> he's like we went and we basically saw As a all guy good bits and start and end <laughs> yeah exactly he's like and then we basically went in and saw a guy at a girl hat in half of the chainsaw while they're having sex on a bed with comedy you can really push stuff and fortunately for us dave and bj just let us go for it and I'm like all right well that's perfect um he's like it's so ridiculously extreme extreme there's more blood in that scene being sprayed around the room than there would ever really be in the rest of the movie combined or in their bodies combined. He's like, it's everywhere in the room, it's on the ceiling, it's on the walls, and on the floor there's about two inches deep by the end of the scene, which is fucking crazy. Think about just walking on set to that studio and just walking into that room and being like, what the um, fuck? Imagine them building? cleaning, say it was real oh, blood, oh. and they cleaned it all up, and then you hit it with a black light. Oh, you no, go it's, blind it's, and see no, it from you space, would. the Hubble would <laughs> freaking pick that up. Oh, that's great. Um, so the interesting thing about Jenny Ortega, so she briefly appears as Sky, the final victim um, of Greg Knoll, arguably one of the more popular, uh, the more successful actors in the actresses, actors in the movie. Um, but she was cast in the role of Wednesday on Netflix because of her short performance in this movie. Oh, that's how she got oh, that that's, gig. Because that was the first thing Rob okay, had said. Yeah. Yeah. He goes, is that Jenny Ortega? Well, you watch her, she basically plays Wednesday. Right. Yeah, like, more or less. Yeah. Just no smiles, black hair, black eyeliner, total Not blinking. Right. somber, no blinking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah that was her... her screen test for Wednesday. Basically, yeah, yeah and yeah, I, I, I thought that was cool as hell. I was like, oh, that's awesome. So, something really successful paid. came out of this. Yeah. yeah, no shit. yeah. yeah. And Wednesday Adams has been my crush since I was like, knee high to a duck. Oh, yeah. that's, yeah, yeah that's Dude. every spooky kid's. And Jenna Ortega is Wednesday gorgeous. gorgeous. She's, yeah. yeah. She did that beautiful. role incredibly. It's Lily Monster for me, but yeah, I I get what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. I mean, oh, yeah. men of a certain age. Yeah. You yeah. Know. So you must yeah. have loved the Rob Zombie Miss... It was no. okay. I, I I was really I didn't I like bummed. it at all. Uh, I, I figured G, I figured you would like That's it, Dylan, but I, I was I was really really. I'm a down. Monsters fan and a Rob Zombie fan. Which, I mean, which, it was a it was a recipe for like one of his. It would have could have been one of his if it was done correctly. One of his favorite. Yeah, yeah. and films see, I'm a done. huge Monsters fan. Mm-hmm. I like Rob Zombie's early stuff. Yeah, yeah, but like the mix of the two. They just didn't sit with me because, like, he didn't get the Rob Zombie factor out of it. No. But then also, like... Well, you can't with it being kind of a family fucking... I I just don't think that Rob Zombie should have been been doing a family They're making a Winnie the Pooh horror movie. You can get away with it. Right. But I I, I don't... Because what they were going for, what Netflix was going for, was basically a color remake of... Of the original show, right? Yeah, and and it's just Rob Zombie. That's not his. I mean, he wants it to be original to a degree because mm-hmm. he's yeah. an artist. He that's he what had, he wants. There was an originality with and it, I, but I and, just, and that's what I think I like. He's most also about so big that I don't think a lot of people tell him no. Right. 
yeah. and that he's, might be a problem he's to too. that point now yeah, yeah. I, sure. yeah I one of the things I liked was same reason I liked his take on on the first Halloween was I love it was a it was yeah. an origin story mm-hmm. right and I'm a fucking sucker for origin same. stories yeah same. fair so, enough and it was kind of like the origin story for the monsters right yeah, yeah. yeah. fair enough yeah and that's like I get that part for the monsters I know we derailed to the monsters that's but fine. That's fine. um like I like that origin story. But just the there's some kitschiness I, yeah, yeah. of the mm. entire movie. It was very, just, yeah. very kitty down to, yeah. to it, which could have been something that he could have done that still was funny, but he could have made it dark. I tell you and, what. So my, my my family every year we dress up and like almost cosplay level do Halloween costumes. Yeah. Like nice. nice. And to a point that's where it's like really impressive. Thank they get you. like professional photography and shit done with it too. It's Thank hell you. yeah, that's oh, awesome. Nice. Yeah, Thank it's you. really cool. Um, Fun for the whole family. Yeah. <laughs> um, and one year we did the monsters. Um, and so I like that whole getting the costumes made and shit. Like I put the monsters on and set my kids down. A good dad move, I feel like. And it was like you kids watch this shit it's gonna make you good people one day and like, um, Dad, what is this or as fucked up as me someday <laughs> <laughs> why is there no color and death um, <laughs> but but they they liked it and then uh when the movie came out this year um it was a good bonding moment for dad and the kids yeah. was yeah. hey look they like they made it and it's color now and it's bright right, and right. updated Enjoy. for you flashy guys. and yeah. music and yeah and i just i'm not and I know we're going off on a tangent of this movie, but we have you and I haven't discussed it yet. We haven't. Um, I am not a fan. Isn't this of the, a podcast about movies, though? So I guess is that what this is about? Fuck. Wild. That's what someone told me. Was <laughs> I was told there'd be a clean toilet, and that didn't happen. So <laughs> well, well, was, well, who knows? Was, what we're it doing. was until clean until I got rock. to it. No. Yeah. Hi, my name's Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I I've never been a fan. Like, because they were they were great for the type of movies that Rob Do- Zombie did. Uh, you know, uh, Three from Hell, uh, Devil's Rejects. Like House all the way back, corpses. yeah, all the way back to House of a Thousand Corpses and shit. Yeah. Like the the acting style and the acting chops of the people that he casts in his movies are great for those types of movies. Except when you when wife. you do something along, yeah, when you do something along the lines of the monsters and trying to redo the monsters, you had actors in the original that were some of them, a couple of them are still like relevant, like are, are still do things, mm-hmm. and like yeah. you 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 cast your buddies in it, Rob, and it was it showed. It showed. It just, I, 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 I had to watch it. It took me like three attempts to watch it all the way through. Like I'd start watching it, and like I'm fucking bored, and then yep. I'd shut it off, and I'd go back and I'd watch it again. And I'm like, God damn it, I'm so fucking bored. And finally, I finished it, and I'm like, I'll never get that. T- <laughs> I'll never get that two hours, yeah. two and a half hours yep. back. Yeah. But I mean, for for what it is, if you're if you're a huge fan of the old show, and you are. You've got a family that would sit down and watch it with you, like you know Dylan. Like it's worth it's worth giving it a watch. But I I well I'll, and I'll it, die happy not watching it again. Studio six six six. I don't know if I would watch that with my kids. I wouldn't. I wouldn't no. unless your kid is like you know thirteen or something. Yeah. That's one right. thing. I might have but, to wait a couple of years. Right. Yeah. Um, my kids are dogs. I'll watch it with them. Yeah. <laughs> savages. <laughs> no, they're not savages. They're dogs. No, like they yeah, are the most they're civilized the savage, dogs. savage yeah. animals that will sit and <laughs> and not take in what, what's being shown to them. Yep. <laughs> Same. But yeah. So. Um, Fun. Uh, we we talked about Jackal uh, playing during the chainsaw scene. Um, he uses a custom guitar with the chainsaw grafted onto it, which is pretty sick. Um, the song player, sorry, uh, Dave Grohl played Satan in Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny. Um, in I this really film. wanted a cameo from that. Right. Yeah. I was expecting yeah. Jack Black right. to pop well, up somewhere or or yeah. some callback to him as Satan. Something. In yeah. Tenacious D would Something have been great. like that. But in this, f- b- film, you can make he's a broad possessed by satanic yeah, forces. You yeah, can like, make a broad connection if you want. To, right. I guess, yeah. But to mention something with metal or like a, a rock off or something like that. Something. That would have been all I would have needed. And be like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fucking great. We see you. But yeah, um, that's that's what I got for uh, for trivia. Um, we do something every once in a while on here that w- with movies that have it, um, God which is. Damn it. I always fucking tell myself that I'm gonna like Google this shit oh. ahead of the episode. The fuck and count? Yeah, the yeah, fuck so, count, the death oh, count, yeah. fuck kill count. count, whatever. I'm, Let's go around, Kyle. How many times do you think they said fuck? You have the number on hand. I have the number. Oh. How long was the movie? Do you have the runtime on the movie? Uh, it was um, like an hour forty-five. Hour, so. Yeah, I almost, think almost Vegas two. would probably set this one at. at <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say eighty-five times. Okay, Rob, don't 
Don't cheat. 666. Okay. <laughs> That's a, I, that would have been I, fucking legit if that, that was the case. If they worked that up. It would have been a uh, biscuit song if that were the case. I'm, I'm going to say somewhere around the 120, 130 mark. Okay. Dylan? 62. Okay. So you were closest. Josh was closest. No um, so Yay. 162 job, times, Good an guess. average of 1.53 times per minute. They said the word fuck. The average was what That's per minute? One point five three times, one and a half times per minute. They said the word yeah, fuck. Yeah, so yeah, it qualifies as a Fred Durst led song. <laughs> Funny, he literally has a song that's like the whole point is how many f words can he fit into one song, and he's yeah, like, fuck, I've said, fucking I've fuck said shit. fuck forty seven times in this fucked up rhyme. Like Jesus Christ, <laughs> I love it. Um, but yeah, it's it's on par with what was the pick of destiny, which was just under. Um, Two times per minute in that movie that they said it. I don't oh, remember the actual wow. count, but it was under two two times. That's um, which, insane. It, what's crazy is it ranks nowhere near the top of like, like uh, Wolf of mm-hmm. Wall Street was like over four point something times per minute. Okay, so they, something they, like that. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, something like that. yeah. The number one is is uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Trailer Park Boys. Oh yeah, uh, Big but man. they they did Big their Square Net movie <laughs> and yeah. the Square Net movie. Had it, it's the number one top ranked most times fuck said in the movie, and it was like 9.8 times per minute. Jesus. They said yeah. the word fuck. It was yeah. insane. Ricky? Yeah. Crazy. Um, well, so, all three of them. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Fucking bubbles. bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, this, uh, we also do a little bit of a ranking to, to just rank the movie uh, on a scale of one to 10. Um, who wants to go first? Out of 10, I would personally, so I I enjoyed this movie, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to rush to watch it again. So, yeah. I mean, a seven for me, I feel like is fair. That might okay. be a little generous, mm-hmm. but like six and a half, seven, okay. somewhere in that range cool. for me. I mean, I'm right about the same. I'd give it a six just because it's one of those, <clears throat> what really kept me in on it was the gore factor mm-hmm. and the goofiness of it. But, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know why... Like, it was just, like, the interim between everything and then mixing that comedy with the horror, with the gratuitous yeah. horror. Just something about that was, like, eh, give it a six. Didn't, didn't, it's, it's didn't a, mix yeah. as well as it could have. It's a right. fun, it's, like... Yeah, like you want to chill. Like you want to watch a movie like you've a seen party before. Movie. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Party yeah. And you got a bunch of friends who happen to like the same type of music or like the Foo Fighters. Like, let's put this. Or bitch you're having on. a right. stressful time in your life. You want to because you can back tune and, out for a few minutes and bullshit, yeah. have a drink, and then come back and be like, they just fucking saw it. Exactly. Do that. Yeah. Like, exactly. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. a background movie. Yeah. Yeah. Like, sure. Oh my god! Just took his head off with a symbol. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. What you got for rankings? Bad uh, I'm I'm gonna have to give it a six point five, uh, just because you know during when they were writing and recording, yeah. you know I just I related You're like to I that. fucking I, yeah. yeah I feel these <laughs> scenes yeah. to the core right you know just because of everything that we've been going through as as a, a band the last couple of months you know it's, it, that <laughs> I just, do that huh? I that do just that. It, it really struck a chord with me Dave so, and I are basically the same. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's that's a fair ranking for sure, Dylan. Um, I got I got to give it two different scores. Um, this is the first. Yeah, Ooh. if if it, I mean, watching it um, recently, seven point low sevens, uh, it's like seven point two, seven point three. Mm-hmm. If this movie came out when I was a teenager, though, that's a like good if point. I was sixteen yeah. or seventeen. This is getting an eight. I mean, that's it'd, be an 11. High, oh, it'd be high. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, eight point eight, eight point nine. Yeah. To um, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, nice. I mean, because those are those are like the the <laughs> core <laughs> movies from my childhood. We did Rockstar uh, on a previous yeah. episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, That's the, such a the good pick of Destiny. Mm-hmm. I mean, any any movie that had to do Young with Jennifer a band. Christian. I mean, I mean, even what was uh, Dwight Schrute's band that he was Rock, in? The Rocker. Uh, the Rocker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. fucking love oh, that. Forgot movie. about School that movie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. School, School of Rock. Rock. We did I mean, all these all those movies that had to do with being in a band. When I was a teenager, fucking core. Memories. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. 100%. If, if this would have came out when we were that age, it would be one of those that I talk about, like along the lines of School mm-hmm. of Rock and the Rocker. And how like old that. those references are in that movie, Studio 666, they could have made that movie. And, that it, and it, it would have been. been any different. Yeah. yeah for no. sure. I mean, I think it helps given where Foo Fighters are now. Not well, They, yeah, were, they were just as big back tenth. then. Yeah. But it was like, you know, entree into their global right. blow up yeah. versus 
not past their global blow up because they're very much so obviously relevant. Just but, worldwide, yeah. Um, for sure. But they're on, they're in a different stratosphere. They're rock and roll hall of fame. Oh, yeah. booked just waiting. Yeah, Dave Grohl is going to go down as one of the all time greatest musicians. Period. Yeah, he's, mm-hmm. he's if he's not in that conversation, agreed. you're right. not having the right conversation. One hundred percent for sure. Yeah. Um. So I got so so you said if you had seen it back then, eight point something higher eights. Yeah, eight point yeah. eight. Yeah, and now yeah, it would definitely have gotten that point. Right now, seven, yeah, seven, like seven point two. Seven two. Okay. So I mean, because am I going to watch it again? Yeah, I yeah, like I'll satanic I'll, shit for sure. Yeah, and I like that fucking riff. And if you hear me write a song that sounds similar, don't judge me. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Just don't get your mo- notebooks mixed up. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Isaiah. <laughs> so I I have the lowest score for it out of the out of all of us, but I get wow. A, yeah, I gave it a five point two out of ten. Okay. Um, it was great to see the guys in the band have fun, have a good time, record, you know, do their their own movie. That was that was awesome. But this movie, and I've said it before, is one hundred percent an Evil Dead like rip off. Like it is is one hundred percent that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the practical effects were fucking awesome. The uh, the gore factor was great. Yep. <laughs> The gore factor was great, but the bad acting took me out of the movie. Um, it did effectively creep me out a few times, which was, which was you know something that I that I enjoyed. But yeah, I just I don't. Like I said, I'll watch it again, um, just because it's. I love Foo Fighters and I love horror yeah. and I love gore and shit. When, so yeah, when we decided to do this movie, I was like, Dave Grohl can do no wrong in my book. One hundred percent. And oh, it, pause, it, yeah. pause yeah. for any awful news story that might break in the future. About who he is, because <laughs> right, yeah. that's yeah, the world right. we live right. in now. Right, no shit. But as of right now, current day, Dave Grohl can do no wrong. I love that man. Yeah. And and you know it. Maybe it, it it actually it is. It's 100% my fault for going in and expecting a movie that had with a band, with like a rock band to have like decent acting. It's that's my own fault I, for expecting. I will that. say that that note you sent after you watched it, you were like, "Don't expect the acting to be amazing." I was like, "Okay," yeah. like I kind of figured, but mm-hmm. when you have right. that level of mentality going into it, then you can just let it be what it's going to be. Well, and the guys are still performers. They may be musicians, but they're still performers. And sometimes that equates over to like the silver screen. Sometimes. Yeah musicians rock stars can can go from being musicians and rock stars to somewhat decent actors um not here yeah <laughs> it, didn't, it, didn't, it, didn't, it didn't it didn't relate to this i but think they knew what Marky they Mark had and the funky bunch Ooh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many different levels to that because then he played a rock star yeah and yeah but yeah the, I mean, it is it is what it is. I like wish I said, I had I'll... a good Mark Wahlberg impression to break out right now. <laughs> I don't. Just any Boston accent. Uh, yeah, I'm not good with those. Just yell hey, fuck hey. a lot. This is the longest of my yeah. This right, is the longest and, and a microphone's then, ever been in front of my face. And then, <laughs> I don't know what to do with my. Gotta, hands. We set up on. You gotta drink a bunch of protein. <laughs> That's that is Mark Wahlberg. Donnie. Donnie. <laughs> fuck you, Donnie. Go park the car in the backyard. No, Donnie. These men are nihilists. <laughs> <laughs> Throwback. We also did a Big Lebowski episode with our buddy Devin from Thoughts and Shots. Shout out to Devin. Devin. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Rain of Eris. We're and playing with those been... guys, actually, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. Wow. Pet Shop in Benson, Omaha, Nebraska. Be there or be... EP and... release party for Lame. those guys in Rain of Eris. So come check that Fuck out. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Wow. yeah. So yeah, I mean, that, that leads me to the end of the well, episode. If there's anything you guys quick. want to plug, you got to drop your shows. What the, I'm going to do also is make I, sure... What, I was, okay. Okay. What, I, but, but, that, 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 I was just going to plug some more shit. I mean, Devin yeah, Devin away. had uh, Whitmore on his for podcast, Thoughts and Shots. Thoughts and shots. shots. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like, check out our episode and then his episode and then their episode and with his episode. episode. With him on well, his so show. Connection, right? right? We were talking about John Carpenter on Thoughts and Shots. Mm-hmm. Um, Rob with and Josh Halloween. broke down the original Halloween movie, nice. John Carpenter's Hallmark, yep. obviously. Nice. So okay. you got that little tie yeah. there. So that's oh, yeah. kind of funky. Oh, that um, derailed real quick, yeah. too. Yeah. 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 If you want to just Whenever listen to is involved, two hours really of is. guys getting inebriated and hearing every ounce of that. That is his business mm-hmm. model and it works so fucking well for It does. It's yeah. very we had a great time doing it. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. Yeah. Also, oh, um, um, Lucian, we'll come back. <laughs> Lucian with his podcast, the Weekly, Weekly Geekly, who's also in the Synergy Nation podcast network, mm-hmm. um, he did Studio 666 He too. did a live stream nice. of it. Live stream, okay. yeah. Mm-hmm. So That would have been a fun one to live stream. Yeah, 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 for sure. So if you didn't like um, our um, opinions of it, go check that one out. Or if you want to see fuck yourself, the please. scenes for yourself, <laughs> yeah, go there you go. Right. There yeah. You go. But guess. yeah, um, we are out. also going to be having some merch donated by Whitmore. Um, Weirdmore yeah. is the code word if you have listened this far and you want to go to our Facebook or Whitmore's Facebook. Um, 
So we're gonna be we're gonna be giving out a couple tickets, at least vouchers for a couple tickets. Uh, a drum head, a framed poster, logo, shirts, y'all. Um, make sure to go and fucking comment weird more. On I don't know who designed that stuff, but it's really sexy. Yeah, that fun time. Been me. It's He's in guy, the studio right now. Yeah, some guy yeah, with like a, right a, next to me. Some fellow receding hairline man uh, with a awesome whoa, beard. Whoa, is a uh, hey. There's, I, there's two of us. Relate. In, three of three of us in here. With Thoughts that. and shots oh, fired. Fuck. Watch out. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. That was really bad. Fuck the, really two, bad. <laughs> fuck the <laughs> two people <laughs> with 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 fancy, lovely, beautiful hair. Um, forget you guys. But yeah, uh, <laughs> go comment Weird More on the Facebook pages, either on our page or theirs, um, Instagram, all of the like. And we'll stuff. find you. Appreciate you guys listening and appreciate you guys for coming over and doing some content with us. Always yeah, a good time. Yeah. 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 Back for Thanks sure. for having us. Yeah, it's a blast. blast. All right, well, talk to you guys later. Love you. Bye. 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 Cool. Hell yeah. Holy fuck, that was amazing. Thank you so much for hanging out with us and the band Whitmore. You can see them live Friday, March 17th in Omaha at the Pet Shop Gallery, April 7th and April 26th in Lincoln. Check out everything they have now and upcoming at facebook.com forward slash Whitmore Band. We have one more episode with these fine lads coming out soon. Follow us too at facebook.com forward slash after the credits TV. Want some sexy merch or tickets to a show? Mention the code word weird more on either of our socials. We love you more than Dave Grohl loves writing the ending. That's a wrap. Synergy Nation Network Podcast. Shows for those with passion. Visit us online at simnation.net.